I was a pot salesman. I was a pot smuggler. And uh, me and a couple of my buddies from our surfing days, and it was a, but it was a total, it wasn't gangster. It, it wasn't badness. It, it, it wasn't paranoia. It wasn't, you know, look what we're doing, man. You know, it wasn't that at all. It had no, none of those elements were in it. Um, uh, the Hells Angels was a, were a bike club. Of course, everybody's heard of these guys, and, and um, millions of stories have been told. Um, but in those days, in the Hate District, I had a girlfriend. And a guy named Chocolate George one night was hit by a car and killed. Uh, my girlfriend and I were right there when it happened. And uh, my girlfriend literally just ripped her blouse off and wrapped it around George's head because George's head was just split wide open and bleeding really bad. And he, he died that night. Well, there was another guy named Mike, and I'll just leave it at that, that lived, he slept in the straight theater. And the straight theater was, you know, where the dead played and airplane. And these were, but in these bands, you know, it's like, oh, he's dropping names. But no, these were just local bands. I mean, Big Brother and the Holding Company was a local band. Peter Albin was our next door neighbor. I watched his dog when they went out of town. They were just local people. Um, Peter Albin's dad owned a, a, a coffee shop. Uh, that literally uh, was, you know, supported local bands would play there. Um, Janice was a neighbor. Uh, these were, uh, you know, uh, John Cipollini with Quicksilver Messenger Service. These were friends. Uh, Jorma Kekkonen with the Jefferson Airplane. Uh, Jack Cassidy. These were people that we knew. They were local people that were in local bands. It wasn't like, oh, wow, you know, you're in, oh, wow. It was like, yeah, you know, and it was it was the days when the Fillmore was literally in the Fillmore district off of Geary, and uh, um, that it was a basketball place. The the old auditorium we used to play basketball there. Um, Bill Graham was a local promoter. He wasn't Bill Graham, you know, Winterland. It wasn't before. It was all before that. Um, it, it, it's, it's the first time I saw Cream. Here's a story. This will give you an idea of the difference in those days. The backstage at the Fillmore was just, there was just an area over there that was the backstage area. Um, and it was just over there, you know, off the side of the stage. And um, they literally hung curtains up there sometime. There were blankets and shit up there and to give the artist privacy back there. But first time I saw Cream. The, with Eric Clapton and, uh, oh my God, Ginger Baker and Jack Bruce. Yeah, huh. the old brain ain't gone yet. And, uh, but the first time I saw them, it was on the billboard at the Fillmore was this. Paul Butterfield Blues Band, which was a big band. They were from Chicago. These guys were real. And, but it was in big letters, Paul Butterfield Blues Band, headliner. Underneath it and the cream in little letters and nobody had had really you know kind of heard of them you know through the local papers and that and the local the oracle and um <clears throat> so cream got up and oh they were the opening act for paul butterfield blues band this paul butterfield blues band was a big time headline band <clears throat> Michael Bloomfield was the lead guitar player for Paul Butterfield. Uh, that's, I guess if there's a guitar player that inspired me in the beginning to pick up a guitar, it was Ramblin' Jack Elliott and Michael Bloomfield. I was mesmerized by Michael Bloomfield. I, I, the, I guess the only reason I'm not a lead guitar player is because I just thought that what those guys did I could never do. They had a gift from God. and But this nut. And any old hipsters out there that were there will remember this night. So, Cream got up. Oh. My. God. We had ne the Power Trio. Nobody had ever heard a Power Trio like that. The closest thing to it was a band called Blue Cheer. 
who was a really the fathers of heavy metal was Blue Cheer. Nobody really recognizes these guys, but these guys, they played the Avalon Ballroom, they opened for Janice and the boys. They were, they were Blue Cheer, Blue Cheer, cool, cool. Uh, they were a power trio, and they were literally, I think in my, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, these guys started heavy metal, these guys said, no, Blue Cheer started heavy metal. And, um, but this was the first real power trio that anybody had ever seen. And Ginger Baker, Jack Bruce, and Eric Clapton, they just, it, it was just wow. Just wow. I mean, I don't have any other adjective other than that. Just wow. And they got done. And cream! 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 And all this time, Paul Butterfield Blues Band is moving their equipment on stage. There was no rotating stage or there wasn't, you know, you had to literally, one band would tear their equipment down, the other band would put their equipment up, you know. It was those days. And uh, one stage, not two stages and four stages and not a rotating stage and none of that fancy shit. And um, so all the time that they're, that they're setting up, it green, nobody wanted them to stop, man. Nobody. No, fuck Paul Butterfield. Green. Well, Paul Butterfield was an old Chicago boy. This is Chicago. This is back to Chicago. Chicago blues. I mean, this was, you know, the electric blues, man. These, were, these guys were who they were, you know, and they were very proud of who they were, and they were real music, real Chicago musicians. These guys weren't hippies, you know, so to speak. Uh, um, and they got up and played. People would not green. Cream! 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 Mike Bloomfield, the guitar player. And you could see Paul Butterfield was pissed. It pissed him off. Because nobody would stop. Nobody would listen to his band. They were the headliner. And nobody, people would not let up. And you could see on the stage the confusion of this of what do we do? You could see it in, in the other musicians in the band. What do we do here? Because I had never seen anything like this happen before. And this was just happening. People were not, and man, at the old Fillmore, it was wooden, baby. When you stomped on the floor, when you had how many ever people were there stomping on the floor, it fucking was, it shook the whole fucking building. Because it was a wooden, old wooden place. Right on Fillmore and Geary Street, right? You turn the corner at Geary. And that was when Fillmore was, whew. I mean, it was a trip down there. That was, it was really a different era. And, um, but Mike Bloomfield did the coolest thing, man. Just the coolest thing. He took his guitar and, and the people would not stop. Cream! Cream! Bloomfield's, my, I mean, uh, uh, Butterfield's trying to do his thing, his harmonica thing, which great Chicago blues guy, man, no doubt. People bought his albums, man. Everybody had a Paul Butterfield album. And uh, people, everybody loved Paul Butterfield blues, man, but cream. Nobody had seen this, man. And uh, Michael Bloomfield, man, he just took his guitar, walked over to the side of the stage, and held his guitar out there for Eric Clapton. I thought. Wow. I thought. That's a historical moment right there, man. That was the coolest fucking thing. And and it was, and Paul Butterfield was on the stage looking at this happening. And this was not rehearsed, choreographed. This wasn't no, you know, no, no promo guy's idea. This was just happened. It happened. And uh, Cream came back up, man. And. Paul Butterfield, he was pissed. I mean, he was pissed. And uh, he was visibly pissed. But good for him. He was a Chicago man. He's got a right to be pissed. And Paul Butterfield stands on top of it. I love Paul Butterfield Blues Band. And, uh, but Cream. That was the first night I saw Cream. Wow. First time, yeah. First time I saw Jimi Hendrix was on the back of a fucking Hertz rent-a-truck in Panhandle Park. 
<laughs> That's the first time I ever saw Jimmy Hand. It was free. We were out in the park, and you were just a monster. Dude. Yeah, those were different days. Different days. Those were the bad. Those were the days of the Avalon. Oh, the Avalon Ballroom, man, the coolest venue ever. The coolest venue ever. Just had they had these great big lounge seats upstairs. Big the big cocktail lounge type booths. You know the big plush leather. Rounded back, circular. Oh God, man, it was cooler than snot back in those days, man. Just cooler than snot, and it was like Blue Cheer opening for Janis Joplin, uh, Big Brother and the Holding Company, and these were local bands, but they were local hots. You know what I'm saying? They were the local guy. And this was when the venues were going on. It's just not like that anymore. People don't know what they're missing now with this karaoke craze and and this cover band thing and you know I, I mean it's like original music isn't loved anymore people don't go to listen to music they go to clubs to listen to themselves their self-talk or their self-sing karaoke here we are you know it different it, you, back in those days back in those days they had a place called the purple was it purple onion Oh, wait. Oh, I might be getting some towns confused in my mind. But it was a coffee shop on the other side of Panhandle Park. You know, 50 cent spaghetti feed. You know, for 50 cents you could come in and eat all the spaghetti you wanted. You know, poetry readings. People would get up and on the mic, a little stool like that, you know, read poetry. Allen Ginsberg would be a special drop-in guest, you know. And you'd hear these, that was when things were evolving. So how did things evolve into you backing up semi-trucks of weed? Because <laughs> I, I think it's a fascinating story. The reason why it's fascinating is, for one, the time period and the place. But it's almost like a movie. You know, it's it your is. life is very much like it could be a Hollywood blockbuster. It really could, especially when you go all the way through it. I mean, you had experiences with the Hells Angels. You went but through. But they weren't. But they weren't this monolithic. Um, but it was the beginning of that. They were, the, the angels back in those days, they hung out at a place right across the street from the straight theater called Benches. And they were like, they were like the Haight-Ashbury Police Department. Um, they really were. They, they were an element of, of security there that, um, um, you know, because there's assholes always. Um, you know, a lot of times when you step into darkness, you don't really see all there is to see at first. It's a mystique. Yeah. Yeah, you changed it on me. I did, a little bit. I, I, it's still being written, actually. I, I don't want to go too fast. I remember the times down in old Mexico Dancing with the Crystal Queen All smokers passed out at the bar You're drinking too much tequila, it seems Invisible and bulletproof, all the law never saw the deals go down. Yeah, smugglers, bikers, and hippies, we were working in the border towns. I guess we were young and crazy, riding hard in old Mexico. Smugglers, bikers, and hippies, all dealing in the Mexican gold. The smugglers' blues were nowhere. Dr. 
feel good was letting go. We were living and dying down in old Mexico. I'm dancing through my memories when I'm singing about the good old days. I survived the smuggler's dream. I did some time along the way. I think I'm still invisible, but not bulletproof anymore. So I'm living in the hills of Oklahoma, where an outlaw can build a home. I guess if we were young and crazy, running loose in old Mexico, yeah, smugglers, bikers, and hippies, all dealing in the Mexican gold. Smugglers blues were nowhere to be found And we were so high we never thought we were coming down No, the crystal queen had a hold of our soul Dr. Feelgood wasn't letting go We were living and dying down in old Mexico Forget old Mexico, the death of a smuggler's dream. While well, I wrote this song in a Mexican jail, not too close to hell for me. Standing at the crossroads, there's a burning Joshua tree where the white witch killed the Crystal Queen, and Doctor Feelgood lied to me. the song. It's one of the